Welcome to Living Faith Christian Church. We're glad you're here with us. I invite you to stand as we enter into the Lord's presence together and worship. I'm coming with the heart of worship. I'm bringing in a brand new song. I'm ready to see the unthinkable. I'm ready for a miracle. Heart praying for a fresh encounter. Souls looking to the living God. I'm ready for a real revival. Would you join me? Would you join me for a prayer? Jesus, we just thank you so much that we could gather in this place and worship you. You've done so much for us. We thank you for the cross and for dying to pay the price, the ransom for our lives. Holy Spirit, move in this place. Speak to us through your word to help us to be more like you, Jesus. Help the puzzle pieces of our lives to come together to paint a picture of you, Jesus. And when someone looks at our lives, we want them to see you. I lift up Patty Smith to you and Bob Smith Patty Smiths could use your healing. 
could use your touch. I could use your presence right now. So be near to Patty. And I lift up many other prayer requests, Lord. People who are hurting, people who need healing, people who need restoration. We place them all into your hands this morning. We thank you for your presence, for your love, and that you are God above it all. I pray this in Jesus' name. Everyone said, amen. amen. You may be seated. Welcome. I'm glad that you're here and that you decided to join us today. If it's your first time, I just want to give you a special welcome. Please stop by our Connection Center on your way out. We have a free gift for you that we would love to give to you. We also have a We Care card right in front of you. If you'd like to fill that out, that would be wonderful. It let, lets us know that you are with us. And also there's a place on the bottom to put your prayer requests and we have a prayer team that would be happy to pray for you all week long. We care about you guys so, so much. So last week was Easter Sunday, and it was amazing here at Living Faith. God was on the move in many powerful ways. I know of at least one person coming to Christ and accepting him for the first time and getting saved. And I'm sure there were others, but praise God for that. Yeah, it was, yeah, praise the Lord. I, I'm just excited about that, to see new life and what God is doing. And we had our Easter art exhibit. I don't know if you saw that last week. It was up here on stage. And it was wonderful to see that the people here from this church came together painting different pictures. Some people called it little blobs. Some people called it other things, which I thought was very funny. But when it all came together, when Pastor Ed was speaking, I was blown away to see that it was a picture of Christ. It was a picture of Jesus. And that's what we want our lives to look like. So praise God for that. And then we have a lot of events happening here at the church. If you want to be a part of that, I'm jealous that I wasn't at that paint night because now my picture wasn't up there. I missed out. So don't miss out, all right? So we have a lot of great events. And the art exhibit will be out there around the corner there in the hallway if you would like to see that, all right? We also have a women's event coming up, and I would love for you to check out this video here to hear a little bit more about it. Good morning. I would like to invite ladies, high school and over, to this year's women's conference called Living Free, happening on Friday, April 28th, and Saturday, April 29th. Scarlett Hiltabeidel is coming with an important message about holding on to peace and rest in a world full of worry. And last year, Marissa and I were blessed to partake in a study by Ms. Hiltabeidel on the topic of anxiety, which we found to be so impactful. I mean, I can remind myself that worry does not solve anything and that we are called to trust in the Lord, but digging deeper into why that is, learning more about who we trust and what he promises, well, that's everything. It is, and he is. Jesus is our shield against all those pesky thoughts and feelings. So we hope that you'll join us Friday evening, April 28th, and Saturday morning, April 29th, as Scarlett Hiltabeidel encourages us to dive into the Bible, to find rest, to seek his peace. Tickets are $15 and are available online or in the lobby today. We hope you can join us for both days, but if not, no worries. Come for the time you are able. Make time to connect with other women, and to hear truth from the Lord. We hope to see you there. See you there. Wonderful. We hope to see you there. Also, we do have a senior event that is coming up. There's going to be a lunch and also a movie. You could buy tickets for that outside in the atrium or online, and that's happening this week, all right? So definitely be a part of that if you're interested. It's going to be a wonderful time to fellowship and be together here at the church. Would everyone please stand, and let's continue to worship our Savior.
God, we've gathered here together declaring that we will never stop singing your praise. We will never stop worshiping you. We will never stop giving you glory. Lord, we thank you for this day you've given us for the breath in our lungs and for the freedom we have to gather here in this place to worship you, to enter into your presence, to give you glory and to hear from you today, Lord God. Lord, we thank you, as we sang earlier, of the story that, you, that the, the truth that you sent your son for us. So Lord God, we're gathered together to give you glory, to say thank you, to say you alone are worthy, and to declare you as our Lord. We ask now that you would speak to us, speak to us through your word as we're prepared to hear it now, Lord. Speak to us through Pastor Ed and the message that you would have us here today. Again, we thank you that we could gather together and be in your presence. We give you a glory and we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> you may be seated. I want to join what has already been shared with you by Mike and welcome you personally. It's so great to have you here today. And also whether you are here, as many of you are, in the sanctuary for this service and also online. And so we began this new series last week. And what a day Easter Sunday was. Tremendous day to give glory to God. I'm excited to share with you that last Sunday, including all of you that joined us online during the service, it was exciting because it was for many reasons, but one of the reasons was last Sunday in doing so, we were able to share the message of the gospel with more people on one day than ever in the history of the church. So we praise God for that. Thank you. Glory to God for that. And it was a great time to talk about moving from a mess to a masterpiece and how God gave us a canvas to paint, and we don't know how to do that, and he has a way to do it. I encourage you that we learned how all the pieces came together there. And so you can see those of you that are here today on property on site, then when the service is over, please, you can go in the hallway and you can see all the giant art that's displayed and you'll be able to see it up close and personal. It's really amazing. You saw the images, but you get to go and see. You really should before you head out. It's quite an astounding thing that how everyone was able to work together, be guided by Bobby on our staff. They didn't know what they're doing. It's just an amazing thing. But there are all kinds of puzzles. There really are. And so different kinds of things. Some is, are, 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 when done like that, could be canvas painted to come together. But there are other things. Sometimes puzzles we don't always think about, and yet we do think about them. So, for example, let me show you a picture here. And so this is a group of people. It's a lot of people, don't you think? And so these people are at the Marriott Hotel in Stamford, Connecticut. And this was the first weekend of this month, this year. What you happen to be looking at is the Tournament of Champions for the American Champion Crossword Puzzle, you know, right there. <laughs> and so believe it or not, there are 774 people from 44 states that signed up for this. And so they were a part of this because some people are really into crossword puzzles, you know. And to me, when I look at a crossword puzzle, I just kind of imagine I see all these words and images, you know. We're going to show you one. You just get an idea. You just kind of look and I see it. And it's all kind of a mixture. So thank you so much. So some of you are really avid crossword puzzle people, digital or in print. You can take that down. Thank you. So I got to ask, how many are really into that? Are you? Raise your hands. Don't be ashamed. Okay. The rest of you are ashamed you're doing that. Yeah. So, so a, lot of, a lot of people are into this, and it's an amazing thing, I guess. For me, I am not a crossword aficionado. Okay? I'm not. And, and so in many ways, I find them very frustrating but then what I've learned makes me frustrated that they frustrate me because I really shouldn't. I shouldn't approach it that way. You know, it's funny how sometimes things are hidden in plain sight. Jesus taught parables and used parables. And the parables, uh, the disciples came and asked sometimes, why do you teach in parables? And he explained something that was very powerful. And so what he explained is, uh, well, let me show you and how it works with the puzzle. Turn, if you would, in a Bible to Matthew chapter 13, 
And I'll read aloud for us uh, for those that are here on site. And so in Matthew 13, I'm going to skip around a little bit, but I want to show you something you may not have seen before. So in Matthew 13, verse 1, it says, That same day Jesus went out of the house, he sat by the lake. Such large crowds were gathered around. He got into a boat, sat, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, stories. So this one, a farmer went out to sow his seed. And he talks about how he scatters the seed. So he read, if we were to read it, he talks about he's along the path, along the way, along the rocky places, where the weeds choke it also. There's another, and then some on good soil. And then in verse 10, it says, The disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? And he said, Because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them this moment. Whoever's been given will be given more. They will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, that will even be taken from them. I speak to them. That's why in parables. In other words, he was saying, from my perspective, well, you see, in the parable, there's a puzzle. It's something that has to be resolved. There's a solution to it. But not everyone's going to see it. And so hidden in the parable is a puzzle. And so as he began to talk to them, they wanted to know what it was about. In verse 18, we now read, he says, listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom of God, does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who heard the word and at once received it or receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. It's interesting to me. Here Jesus has placed in this parable a puzzle. You see, we wonder, one of the puzzles of being a Christian is, I know that God can turn a mess into a miracle in my life. But what do I do? How do I grow? How do I stay? How am I making? Because the simple truth is, many of us are afraid of failing. And the simple truth is also that many begin but do not finish the race. They, they serve for a while. They're excited about God for a season, but they don't continue. What makes the difference? It's like a puzzle. And rather than a painting, this one I find more like a crossword puzzle. Words that somehow must be connected and yet I don't understand. So Jesus used this parable to connect them. He said again, when anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes, snatches away. This is the seed sown along the path. Along the path, you would have the farmer would go on the path, it'd be a path through the field, depending on the field, and around the sides. Now, this is in the Middle East, of course, so anywhere the path would get hard, but here it gets especially hard. The soil is baked. And so seed that would fall or be scattered on the path doesn't go down into the soil. So even with the water, it's not going to take root. The soil is hard. It's been beaten down because it's a path. It's just laying on the top. So there it is. It looks like there's promise, but yet nothing is really going to happen. Why? It hasn't sunk in at all. We learn that in order for you and I to follow Christ, we must be willing to hear. We must be willing and able to hear because that's what he started with. He said, again, anyone who hears the message about the kingdom of God, you have to be able to hear it. But it says anyone who hears it and does not understand it, the hearing, it didn't really go in. They didn't, if you will, get into it. It didn't, didn't, didn't sink in. Now, some of us, all of us, know something probably about crossword puzzles. We know they're puzzles and they make little things and do all this kind of stuff. But then there are the others of you that are into it. 
You are, you may not know this, a cruciverbalist. I am not making that up. I found that word and researched it several times to find out, is that a real word or does someone make that up on the internet? It's a real word. A cruciverbalist is someone that's very good at crossword puzzles. Cruciverbalist comes from the cruis, which is cross in the Latin, interestingly enough. So someone that really gets into it, they, they don't just hear it, they understand it. You see, for you and I to go forward, for God to do something in our lives, we have to hear the message and we have to receive it. It has to come in and we have to hear it. It's interesting to me that there's a passage in John where Jesus is talking and he said some really hard things. And when he said those really hard things, the people listened. They had come to him. They wanted more from him. And then they said to him, they said, this is a hard teaching. If I'm remembering it correctly, I'm trying to get to it. And they said, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Who can hear it? Who's going to tell you? That a lot of times you've heard what God says or you've heard someone tell you about God, but you're like, I don't believe that. I can't accept it. I hear that, but I don't just believe that. I didn't really receive it. I didn't really hear it. You have to be able to hear. You have to open your ears. As a matter of fact, Jesus said something in this story in the parable of the sower it's recorded also in mark and in luke and in mark's version he adds something that matthew did not put in that i think is very very important so in mark chapter 4 where he i'll read it for you mark 4 in this verse after jesus told this parable he then said then in verse 9 then jesus said whoever has ears to hear let them hear after he said you produce a crop Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. The meaning was profound. In fact, one commentator said, now it would be like saying, now think that out. Think about that. If you have ears to hear. So he said, as I share this, some of you are not going to receive it. There are all kinds of people again. And there are times every one of us have said, not ready, don't want to hear from God. But yet something has changed in your life and in mine. And it's the Spirit of God that opens our ears so we can hear. And I don't, again, I don't mean just literally hearing my voice or someone else's, but I mean hearing from God and beginning to have interest in understanding and comprehending. That has to happen fundamentally. We pray for many that happened and started happening on Easter. Maybe you are back with us on that is God is birthday, or it happened another time for you. But for sure, if you're a part of this today, and you are, then on some level, you're willing to hear, and you're able to do that because God is enabling that in your life and in mine. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. Again, not literally audio hearing, but in your heart and hearing it from God. This is what he's saying. First, you can't go forward until the message begins to sink in. You have to be willing to hear. But then he said, the seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word, we've got that one down, and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. So you need to be willing to hear and you need to be ready to grow. And they're two different things. Specifically, in this parable, he's referring to Uh, what would happen, the farmer would go out and there would be a certain area of the field, or could be, that the soil is very shallow, and under the soil is bedrock. And so when they would put the seed, or when the seed would fall there, the water would penetrate it first, and often it would grow up first and look like it was going to have great promise. And so it it would get the water because it was shallow, and it would just, boom, there it is. And there are a lot of people that say, yeah, count me in. I'm all about it. I hear this about God. Sounds good. Sign me up. And so there's shallow soil. But the problem is with the heat of the Middle East sun, whenever the heat beats down, the plants need something in particular. Whatever the crop is, it needs moisture. And the moisture comes from the roots. And when the plant, when that seed would try to shoot the roots down, it would hit the bedrock below and it would not be able to get below it. And so what started out with great promise would then soon wither away because it never could grow roots to get connected so it could go further. And this is what happens. Trouble. He says when trouble comes, distress, persecution means opposition or harassment. 
because of the word, because of the message. Very simply, we need to be ready to grow. We need to go further, and we need to be willing to say, God, I need to know. But how do you grow? I need to know what your word says. That's what we need to know because it's God's word that gives us roots. One of the worst things we could do as a Christian is start following Christ and then make up the rules. And that's what happens. We make up the rules. Say, well, I think God would do this. I think God would want that. I believe God would do this. Here's a novel thought. You and I are not God. And just maybe God doesn't think like us. And so what matters is not the way we think he thinks. What matters is how he thinks and what he says. And we know that from his word. We need to grow in a different kind of intelligence. By the way, I learned that people that are very good at crossword puzzles have a certain characteristic. I did a study, and I thought, I wonder if champions of crossword puzzles have some kind of characteristics that are similar. And guess what? They do. So people that are very good at this are known to be strong. They rate highly at something called fluid intelligence. Sounds very impressive, doesn't it? See, some of you that are big on crossword, but right now you already feel better about yourself. Like, <laughs> I, I could see it. You're like, I'm fluid intelligent. You don't know what it means, but I'm, I've got that. So fluid intelligence is the ability to make the mind jump through hoops while solving problems. It's linked to the ability to untangle clues. So person with fluid uh, intelligence, with that ability, they're able to see things and they don't have to go one, two, three, four. They can jump from one to five and to seven, and they can jump ahead. They have that innate ability, and so they see the clues and make jumps. Now, there are others of us that think the world will end if you don't go one, two, three, four. So if you don't go one, two, three, four, you know, everything is going to fall apart. So even if you get it all solved at the end, it doesn't matter because we didn't do one, two, three, four, and it's going to end up not working. So some of you are already worried about that. God wants us to grow. We have to learn and grow in the ability to trust him and take his word and then follow him. He doesn't give us a life where he takes the puzzle and fills in every single dot for us. He wants us to grow in faith and trust him and in the knowledge of his word. Hebrews 4 says, for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates to the dividing of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. In Ephesians chapter 6, where he talks about putting on the uh, armor of God, the spiritual armor, what does he say? Tells us to stand firm. Tells us at the very end that we are able to take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You need to know what God says, because the promises of God, that's what we need to get through this life. Those are more than just the clues, but we'll start by saying the clues to the puzzle in your life. You can start with your crossword in your life and just guess and fill things in. There are five letters. I think it's this and this and this. But we all know where that goes. Eventually, you get to a place that nothing works. And it doesn't work because you filled it in yourself. But it's the Word of God He wants us to grow in, to mature in. He wants us to learn. He wants us to expand what we know. He says, Jesus said on the night that He went to the cross, or, or rather the night before when he was being arrested, before he was arrested, he said with the disciples, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Now, we love to pull out that one phrase, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. God told me, ask whatever I want. But we forget the first part of what he said. If you remain in me and my words remain in you. In other words, you have to grow or you grow by allowing God's word to penetrate your life. You have to be able to hear, but you have to be ready to grow. You're going to need those roots. You're going to know, which means you have to make some effort to do it because God's not going to just open your head and pour it in. So you have to say, I have to learn. I want to know how to do this. I want to grow in this. Now, we can help you with that. And we have groups in all kinds of ways and, and messages and sermons and, and worship. We're already teaching, always teaching the Bible. And, and that's something we focus on. But we want you to grow, but you have to also step forward. Now, you have because you're here with us and you're watching or you're online or you're here. And you're making efforts to grow. But you and I daily, we have to just continue to always say, I need to grow in the knowledge of God. Why? Because I need to not only hear, I need to grow because I want to stand firm with God. And I want this thing to go further in my life. Psalms 119 says, your word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. It's the word of God that shows you what to do. Remember, this is where you get the clues of what to fill in. 
And you say again, well, why doesn't God just tell me what to fill in? And that's sort of here too. It says, the seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. So look at what we got. The first group, he says, they didn't even hear it. So you have to hear to get started. The second group, he said, problem there is they heard it. It looks good. Great promise. They, you know, they look terrific, but they have no root. They've, they've never grown roots to go any further. So they're making it up. They're not going to make it. Now, the third group, they've heard it and, and they're growing roots here. But the problem is they're over here in the section where their weeds are. And there's only so much moisture in the desert. And the weeds are always going to grow and take it. So they're also going to shrivel, not because they don't have the roots, but because all the other things that are there wrapped around them. Worries mean the stress, the word. Wealth is an abundance of possession, the word that's used here. Choke it means just what you think to inhibit the development of it. You need the power of God, of the Holy Spirit to help you. You need the people of God to encourage you and even challenge you. When you try to go it on your own, we always end up in the field of weeds. We always end up in the place where it sucks everything out of us. There's a passage that, uh, that I want to share with you that's pretty, I think, pretty direct about this. And the writer of Hebrews addressed it and, and really specifically about this, this issue with maturity. He said, the writer said, we have much to say about this, but it's hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. You've stopped listening. You're not hearing. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You're no longer maturing and growing. So he said it's, it's hard because you, you don't understand now. You need milk, not solid food. So we read that and we're like, oh, I want to be mature. I don't want to just be that. But how? They stopped hearing. They stopped receiving. It's very, very easy to do. Have you ever noticed weeds grow everywhere? They just do. I, I think I could make a case to say, why do we try to grow grass? <laughs> right? Our weeds are green. We have a cultural image. Grass is better. The weeds are green. They grow without water. Right? They grow up. They just grow. So maybe if we all thought they were beautiful, we'd have great lawns, so we didn't have to cut them even, and we don't have to put sprinklers in or anything because they're weeds. They don't require all the fertilizer and all the other stuff and whatever it takes. I don't know what it takes to grow it because they're, they even have flowers on them sometimes, <laughs> right? The grass doesn't have flowers, right? But they're still weeds, and ultimately, they don't look very good, and they choke everything else out, and it doesn't work. You see, they hurt everything else on the inside of an area. And in this, what he's saying to us, the seed that falls among the thorns will be weeded out. In other words, the growth, you have to grow from the inside out. You don't just change things in your life. God has to continually change inside you. That's when the growth becomes really real. Harvard Health published an article about crossword puzzles. And here's what they said. So for anyone that's, you know, made fun of people that do crossword, here's what Harvard Health wrote. A well-designed crossword puzzle will engage multiple brain regions in your search for the right word. Moreover, crossword puzzle clues often force you to link concepts you had not pictured together. These features mean that crossword puzzles can cause large areas of your cortex to be active and stimulate new connections in your brain. The hippocampus will then remember these new connections, strengthening both your hippocampus and cortex. I really wanted my hippocampus and cortex to be strengthened. <laughs> I don't know what they are, but I want them to be strengthened, right? So what does it say? The big thing here is he's saying, the, the writer is saying, the article is saying, this is an amazing thing. This kind of puzzle because it is difficult, it associates, it actually activates different areas of your brain and creates new connections, which then the part of your brain that's supposed to remember it actually remembers, and it rewires you in a very small way. There are studies to say it helps in cognitive ability as you get older. I'll look at that when I get older. And so, you know, there's all kinds of things. So, so it, it actually has benefits for us. So that means the struggle 
of trying to find that stupid word, okay, actually helps you because it causes you to rewire. Could it not be that God is saying, that Jesus Christ is saying, when you are willing to hear, when you are ready to learn, when you allow God to change you inside out, he rewires you, he takes the word of God and then his promises and shows us rather than just sprinkling the letters of the puzzle together and say, there it is, by forcing us to go through or allowing us to go through struggles, it benefits us to grow in Christ so that we then become mature so we no longer just sit on the sideline. We trust him and the difficulty actually helps us. I do believe there was something in the Bible written about that. That's right. It is in James 1. Therefore, rejoice in trials. When you face trials of many kinds, because the testing of your faith develops perseverance. And it goes on to say, ultimately, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. God uses those things in those struggles, in those different crosswords in our lives, not to destroy us, but to rewire us so that we could trust him. Could he open us up and just pour it in us? Of course he could, but then we would complain and say we're only puppets. No, he is blessed when we trust him. We grow for another reason. The seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. Produces a crop is emphatic here. The wording means, therefore, indeed, yes. It means that when you live your faith in God, you live to impact the world, and you impact the world by producing. We live most of our lives believing if we can just get through life, we're good. And we don't really worry about whether anybody else knows God. We don't really worry about what happens to anybody else because that's us. And we all try to get through life and say, I just want to have a good life. But God wired you or wants to wire you for a different purpose. He wired you or designed you so that when the pieces come together and all of it connects, the real idea is that you live to reach others. You live so others might come to know God as you do because... God used the light in someone else's life in some way to attract you or you never would have had interest in God. He actually wants to wire you and use you and work through you so that you get involved. You say, well, I don't want to care about everybody else. Yes, but when you understand that God has really changed you, it's like, how can you not? Because you know the solution to the puzzle. You understand how it all fits together. John 15 Jesus said, this is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. John also, in the same chapter later, Jesus said, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you. We normally end right there and say, God, thank you, you chose me. Thank you, I'm chosen. I'm so special, thank you. But that's not where he ended. That's mid-sentence. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. In other words, God always designed you to be the seed on the good soil, to be the seed that produces a crop that makes a real difference. And you never know where it can ultimately go. You just never know all the things that God might want to do in you. On April the 2nd of this year, at the Marriott Stanford, Connecticut, Dan, forgive me if I mispronounce his name, Dan Fayer, was crowned the cross, crossword puzzle champion for the eighth time. He beat the second guy. <laughs> He finished his last puzzle one second before the other guy. Hurts to be second, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> the eighth time, you're saying, big deal. Sure. Of course, you might want to know that since it was the eighth time, last year was the seventh time. And because of all his winnings, he happened to be invited and appeared on a show called Jeopardy. And he won a few thousand dollars doing that. You never know what God 
might be doing in you. And you never know. Sometimes you just can't see. And you feel like it's all just a massive mess of a puzzle. Kind of like the crossword puzzle that we started out with. That just looks like a lot of words. And when we look at that, just a lot of words. And yet if you look carefully, you see something. You see that you have to be willing to hear. And, you know, you have to just say, God, what are you saying to me? Be willing to listen instead of rushing through it. You have to be ready to grow. Say, God, I want to do more than just attend a church. It's time for me to grow, learn something. And that God wants to change you from the inside out. Not just what you look like, but who you are. And he does it so that you live to reach other people. He's got a purpose for you. And why does he do it? How does he do that? It's amazing to me. He is the Spirit of God so that we can hear. It's the Spirit that opens our ears, the Holy Spirit of God. The Word of God is what we mature in and grow and learn. And then we need the people of God that make up the church to help us grow strong and live to reach others and have a way to do it. And all of it begins to fit together. And what looks like useless letters actually all fits together in a massive pattern which is what God is at work doing in your life and in mine. Now, your crossword puzzle is a little different than mine. God has a design for you, but he knows exactly where every letter goes. And those letters still involve those four things. Are you ready to hear from God? Are you willing to hear? Are you ready to grow? And will you allow God this time Maybe before or not, but will you allow God to work and change you inside out instead of outside in? And will you understand, even though you may not see it now, that he does this so that you can live to reach. He can use you because he designed you to produce something with your life. So when you get to the end of life and say, I had a good life, he's not going to say that unless you produced a crop because that's what you were designed to do. He said, I don't know how to do that. Exactly. Which is why we have to trust in him to solve the puzzle. That day, sower sows the seed, but hidden is a puzzle of how to grow correctly. And I know the solution is right because the one who was telling the parable is the one who made the puzzle. And when the disciples came and asked, he gave the solution. There is nothing God cannot do in you if you're willing to let him open your ears so you can hear. Let him continue to grow you and stick with it and see what you can learn and make that effort and say, God, I'm going to start growing. I'm going to start allow you to change in here and in here. And then say, God, show me what life is about. And I will live for you. You see, being a Christian means coming to Jesus Christ by faith in Christ, but then saying, I will follow you. I want to live differently, and I don't know how. That's just because you don't know the words to put in your puzzle. He does. Why don't we ask him right now? Would you pray with me? Today, whether you're here or at home, you may be saying, you know what, Pastor, if you knew me, you would say, I need to be completely rewired. Okay, I don't know if that's true. Maybe it is. But fortunately, I happen to know one that can do that. And he can take this part and this part and rewire you on the inside. And no matter how many people tell you that cannot be done, he can. Now, it may be a lifelong process, fact, I'm sure it is for all of us, but what an amazing thing God can do. Today, I want to invite you, whether you are here or at home, to begin that journey with Jesus Christ. If you don't know him with heads bowed to God, you can ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. You say, can he really do that in my life? He really can. Say, do you know anybody who's done that? I really do. So who do you know? Well, I know myself and I know many others, many hundreds and hundreds of people that I've seen do that with. And no matter what you have done or what your background is or where you come from, 
He can. But you have to be willing to hear. And if you are, then right where you are, you can pray. Ask Jesus Christ to save you. Ask him to forgive your sin. You can say it to God in prayer silently. You can say, oh God, here's my life. I give it to you. Confess your sin to him and ask Christ to save you. Declare your faith in him as the son of God who died for your sin and who's alive right now. Tell him you believe that if you do. And if you want to be rewired by God and you're willing to hear, then right now you say that to him. You don't have to say it to me or anybody else. He's the one who saves you. I can. And for those of us that know him, maybe we have become a little less willing to hear, a little less open to growing. Maybe we have stopped letting him change us inside, or maybe we've even forgotten that he's called us to live to reach, and we've made it live for us. Today, why not say, oh God, it's time I give the puzzle of me back to you. Father, show me what to do. And we make a fresh commitment to him and say, God, I'm going to grow. If you'll help me, I'll grow. If you'll show me how. You may need to make a fresh commitment to get engaged in church, to grow, to, to come, to learn. And you're doing that, but maybe a commitment between you and God in your group, whatever it is, just to say, God, grow me. God, I'm here. Take me. Do you think that Jesus came at Easter just to have Easter? No. He came to change your life fully. Today, let him put the puzzle together right now. Father, we call on you. Lord, we pray to you. Hear the prayers of your people that are asking you to forgive them and save them. And for those of you that need to trust Christ, you pray silently to God. Now, you just this is your time to ask. Him. Father, hear the prayers of those of us who say, Oh God, we now call on you, God, to forgive us and help us come back to you and grow. And if that's your prayer, then this is your time silently to pray to him. So Lord, as we do business with you, Put us together, God. We give ourselves to you. Thank you, Father, for all you're doing. Thank you for the prayers of your people. Thank you that you hear and answer them. Thank you for every single one that's trusting you. Thank you for every single one that's recommitting. God, to you be the glory. Thank you. You truly are the cross and the word puzzle in our life that comes together. Thank you for both. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all the people of God said, amen. amen. Let's worship God together.
And that, and that is our desire that we will put our trust in Christ and we will not be shaken. And so that is our prayer. Glory to God for that. Thank you for being here with us today. For those of you, for those of you who are online, you can continue. You can worship God in giving. You can respond. Let us know God did something in your life or you want to know more about Christ or living faith. And one of our team will answer you. They'll be right there with you and try to help you in every way they can. If you're here on site, then at the connection desk, you can do the very same thing and worship and giving as you leave. Let me encourage you, everyone that's on site, take a moment again, go by and see the art. It's pretty amazing before you leave. You want to do that. Don and I are here at the front. We'd love to say hello to anyone we've not uh, greeted in a long time or perhaps if we've never met you, please come by if you would introduce yourself. Let us personally welcome you to Living Faith and we'd be so glad to do that. Father, we give you glory in the church. Thank you, God, for all you have done. Thank you that you are the solution to every puzzle in our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And all the people said, amen. amen. God bless. We'll see you again.